Remember I told you just a little while ago that about uh, 10 years ago, a lot of us who follow Latin America started seeing this shift. China came in and suddenly they started investing in Latin America. I mean, they started investing in Latin America like crazy. I've got a chart for you. I want to show you. Here it is. Remember I said back 2006, right? There's somewhere around what? Uh, you know, maybe uh, less than $10 billion. Look where they are now, right? Look where they are now, somewhere between 200, up to almost $250 billion that they've been investing in Latin America. Now, you think that's interesting, that China is going into a place where we have lost uh, a lot of credibility because of past interventions, as many, uh, you know, followers of Latin America will tell you. Now, look at this. Look at this. Of all the countries, right, that Latin America, that, uh, that uh, China has invested in Latin America, where have they invested the most amount of money? Venezuela. By, look, it's off the charts. I mean, look, look at this, um, look, look at the difference here. Look at the next closest one is what, Brazil? Look at Venezuela. $56 billion with what, Brazil at $22 million or something like that? Now, you think China will allow the United States to push them out at a loss of $56 billion? See, most would argue that they probably won't let that happen, which may be why Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro seems a little more confident, especially in this exclusive interview that he just did with RT Espanol. In Venezuela, there is going to be no war, no military intervention, which does not mean that we do not prepare to defend our land, which is sacred, that we do not prepare the whole system of weapons, the artillery system, missiles, the weapons. What is Donald Trump's casus belli against Venezuela? What is it? We don't have the weapons of mass destruction. We don't pose any security threat to them. The Casas Belli is the oil of Venezuela, the riches of Venezuela. It's gold, gas, diamonds, iron, water, our material riches. Joining us now is our uh, go-to man on geopolitics, expert on all things legal and uh, international, former naval intelligence officer John Jordan, as usual. We're so happy to have him. Hey, John, let's talk. This is a fascinating story that I think most Americans don't know enough about. The Chinese buildup, that the investment that they've been doing in infrastructure over the last 10 years, as I just uh, displayed with some of those charts in Latin America. How, how, how would you explain, though, their sizable investment in Venezuela? Well, there's a lot of tentacles to this, Rick, and the easiest way to understand it is look at it from the point of view of the Chinese economy, which really drives Chinese politics and Chinese foreign policy. Mm -hmm. China is a country who basically imports raw materials and exports finished products at a profit. That's what China Inc. does. So what is China lacking in natural resources? Quite a bit. Predominantly oil. Mm. China is a very oil needy country. And that's why we talked last week about the South China Sea, the Spratly Islands, not just controlling the shipping lanes, but controlling these proven oil reserves. Now, so, according to many estimates, Venezuela has the largest proven oil reserves in the world, mm -hmm. and China wanted in on the ground floor, and that's why it's heavy investment into Venezuela. So that makes sense. They're out for oil. They find it. They've invested $56 billion into being there. See, the thing is, and I, and, I, and I think I tried to express this at the beginning of this newscast, that usually China's not that vocal. The Russians are vocal, you know, the big bear kind of thing. Not the Chinese. They're kind of a little more understated. But yet in this case in Venezuela, they've been pretty out there, right? Why, Why the difference? Well, the Chinese want to protect their investment, and you can tell that the Chinese already started to hedge a little bit by saying they just don't support foreign meddling, and there's a couple different ways to interpret that. Mm. Um, the Chinese don't want to be left out in the cold in case Maduro goes, but the Chinese are squealing loudly, 56 billion decibels loud, actually. But here's, here's the thing that I'm just wondering about, just watching this situation, and I think most of us would want to ask this question. The fact that they're pushing back on the United States. A lot of critics of the United States saying that we're essentially going in there, big-footing the Maduro government, naming another guy as president even though he wasn't elected, that essentially they're even calling it a, a, a coup, right? 
So will the U.S., if all that is true, be less apt to continue this intervention, knowing that Russia and China are now extremely vocally saying to them, butt the hell out? Well, first of all, you could question the idea. There isn't an intervention by the U.S. Every Latin American country, except for Uruguay and Cuba, have all recognized Mr. Guaido as the legitimate reader, uh, leader of, of Venezuela, in addition to the EU. There's no foreign troops on Venezuelan soil, or at least Western ones. So th this isn't, so this really isn't an intervention. But it, it looks like but, the, Mr. Maduro's days are numbered. I think we're going to get to that in a second. But I, I wouldn't characterize this as a Western Can I intervention. interrupt you for just a minute? Because it seems foolhardy to, says, to say that all the other countries have decided that Guaido is president. How about the friggin' people who live in Venezuela? Do they get a vote in this? I mean, who the hell is the United States or any other country in the world to say, oh, here's your president. Sorry, we decided. That doesn't seem right, John. Well, the idea, everybody wants free and fair elections everywhere in the world, and certainly this would be the case in Venezuela. And that's what the EU was demanding, was uh, a lot of those countries were demanding, right. let's, ha let's, ha let's have ourselves an election here that is, uh, the, that is free and fair. But uh, until then, I mean, this is the Western interpretation, whether you agree with it or not, yeah. is that Mr. Guaido is the legitimate under Venezuelan law leader of Venezuela. Yeah, at least according to the United States. And the problem we have with that, of course, is that it seems the people of Venezuela don't necessarily like Maduro. They don't necessarily like Guaido. And we're not sure that either one of them is going to be able to get the job done in the future. And that's what's most perplexing about that nation. But you know what? Fascinating conversation. I always enjoy these with you. Thank you, John. We'll see you again very soon. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.